<laughs> what is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Man, Thanksgiving is next week, my friends, which means it's time for holiday traditions. One of my favorites. Uh, so me and my family, what we do is we each slip into varying degrees of lasagna and turkey-induced comas. We all gather around and watch the first holiday movie of the year. And with the Christmas Chronicles premiering next Thursday on Netflix, man, I can't wait to share this one with the rest of the folks at home. It's got it all. It's got a little magic elves. One of them has a chainsaw. It's got high-speed chases with Kurt Russell and two incredible young stars on an unexpected journey to save Christmas as we know it. Here in just a few short moments to tell me all about this really fun, really awesome film from the Christmas Chronicles. Darby Camp and Judah Lewis are in the building. How about that, guys? You excited? Uh, it's going to be great. We'll bring them out in just a second. But first, I believe we have a trailer for the flick, so let's go ahead and run that clip. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. Stop. Kids aren't stupid. They know how it works. Sorry, Santa. Hot Cupid! Hot Comet! Teddy, check it out! Give me the camera! It's Santa Claus! Live and in person. One night only. You don't look like Santa Claus. Well, billboards add 80 pounds. Christmas is in trouble. Imagine if we all work together. I have seen a lot of strange things, but this? Wait till you see what happens next. If you ever meet Mrs. Claus, maybe just skip this part. Hey, hey, you all want to go on the naughty list? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get back to work. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Darby Kevin, Judah Lewis, right here. Come on, do it up. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations. This film, I, I was telling you backstage, I got a chance to watch it, and I'm a huge Christmas time nut, Christmas movie nut. This thing is so much fun. You guys really knocked it out of the park. Thank you should you, be excited. You. Congrats. <laughs> Have, have you had a chance? Have you guys seen it yet yourselves? Have you? I have seen I it. Have, yeah. yeah, you have. Wonderful. Yeah. So then you know I'm not lying. It's great. <laughs> it, it, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm totally not biased, but I do yeah, think I it's great. Little, yeah. Right. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you all about it. There's so much going on in here. We got the elves. We got to talk about Kurt Russell. We got to talk about all of that. But first, just uh, how are you guys doing? How's life right now? You're you're in the middle, from what I understand, of talk talking about the film going around. H how's Darby? How's Judah? How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. The, I, I've done a couple interviews so far with this lovely lady, and I have to say, just she's 11 years old. Like, I wish I could speak like that when I was 11 years old. I'm just, yeah, I don't know. How are you doing, Darby? I am doing just grand. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, grand. Just grand. And I really have loved working with you, too. I got to stop. <laughs> That's awesome. That's that's great. You guys, uh, there really is a brother sister vibe. It's good to see that that's carried over. Um, let's let's go back to the very beginning. Let's start at how you guys got involved with this because both of you were coming out of tonally two very different projects, very different projects between yeah. the Babysitter and, and, and Big Little Lies, all these different things, very different projects. So how would you end up over here running around saving Christmas? Do you want to start, Drew? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, it's funny. My my agent Sean Scallon called me. Um, and he said, okay, before I tell you what this project is, let me finish. Because he, he knows me. Um, and I was like, okay. And he goes, so there's this Christmas movie. And I was like, Sean? And he's like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. And anyways, I ended up, he ended up telling me about the project. Um, and I got super excited. And so I went up, went in and I met with um, our wonderful director, Clay Cadis. Um and I gotta say, I just fell in love with this vision, this sassy, fun, um, charming Santa Claus that nobody's ever seen before, um, and sort of reinventing that magic and bringing back that that Christmas spirit that we haven't seen in a little while. Um, and I think too, you know, this film is 
really character driven. And I think especially, you know, my character has this uh, huge arc throughout the film. And that was something that I was just, you know, really, really excited to be able to tackle. So Yeah, that's kind of the fun part about your character is it does kind of start in almost, I wouldn't say dark because it is a Christmas movie, but in a darker place sure, than you typically yeah, yeah, expect. No, I mean, like, yeah. yeah, my character is dealing with um, this huge loss and he's really um, on a bad path. He's sort of becoming a criminal. Um, and I think I think for him it's it's about rediscovering that magic and and rediscovering that belief in magic um which is you know vital of course so yeah darby how about you how'd you get involved how'd you end up saving christmas so yes as you know i uh just finished i did big little lies and um some like other things that aren't really kids and so my agent called me and um told like me and my parents about it. it's a christmas movie i really can't see you doing this um like as it's a just a christmas movie so um i was like i i love it so i auditioned for it and so then um i got to talk and meet with our wonderful director, Mr. Clay Claytis. Um, and I just fell in love with it too. And um, so I booked in, I was so happy because this is like, it was one of the first things that actually my friends can see. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's a really good point, I didn't think yeah. Yeah. So now they um, believe you, now they know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. like, oh, you do act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of my Fine. friends are actually like, I don't believe you. It's just like, well, you can't watch anything of me, but go tell your parents to. But I think there's I think there's something to that, and I think, you know, um, one thing that Clay said to me that really resonated with me was, he said, you know, we're not making a children's movie. Yeah. We're making yeah. a movie that we all love and believe in, and it's going to be appropriate for children. And I think that's really a huge statement about this film. A hundred percent. There is a, a, a tangible uh, tone vibe that, like, this is this is a movie for everyone to enjoy. You could always tell when a film was made, like, for kids to watch and nobody else. This has uh, a little bit of everything in there. And, and I... When did you guys film this thing? When did you actually end up? Uh, jump January. Through? January. Well, we started in January and and and, huh. and ended around April, like the beginning of April, probably. It was, was that? Yeah. Was that tricky? Getting yourself in the Christmas spirit right after Christmas. <laughs> four straight months of <laughs> Christmas. Four straight yeah, months. Yeah. That was a lot. It was a lot of Christmas, but I love Christmas, so it was easy for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, I mean, we filmed in Toronto, and it was snowy and beautiful. It was beautiful. And it was definitely, yeah. you know, that that definitely last. It didn't hurt who was playing Santa, huh? It didn't no. hurt that this guy was walking around. The man himself. The man Kurt himself. Russell. <laughs> I always say, you know, uh, the most interesting man in the world is no longer the Dos Equis guy. It's now Kurt Russell. I mean, he really is. He really is. Um, and I think, you know, he's done this absurd range of characters in films throughout his career that just, you know, sprawls every genre imaginable. Um, and now he's playing, you know, St. Nick himself. And I think that's... It's incredible, honestly. Yeah, you got, and you both have individually, you've worked with some pretty amazing people before, but to add Kurt Russell to that list, what was it like first day when you got to meet this man and, and just kind of get to know him and hang out with him for a little bit? When, um, so the first day I met him, um, so um, the director was um, in there, Mr. Clay Cadis, and one of the producers, Mr. Uh, Chris Columbus. Um, so they were in there talking with them, and so then um, me and Judah went in. I was very starstruck because I just saw um, the movie Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, really? <laughs> so I went up there. Was that your first time seeing uh, it was a, like probably about my first time, yeah. And so I went in there and I met him, and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. like I was pretty starstruck. But um, yeah, he's like I really loved working with him. He's, yeah. I like he's such an amazing Santa Claus, and like eighty percent of that beard was his, the hair was his, and so. Uh, like, he's such a believable Santa Claus that he probably is the real Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, we're still on the fence about whether yeah. or not he is the real. Yeah, you know, he might one be. Thing, one thing that I'll, I'll just say about Kurt um, and, you know, meeting him in that whole process is, is just how generous he is and how kind. And, like, he is Kurt Russell, you know, that's and but but you'd never know it the way he acts, the way he, you know, presents himself um, and, you know, I, there was this one day we were filming a scene um, and it was 11.30 at night and yeah. 10 degrees, and we were filming on a rooftop, and they had finished his part of the scene, they had shot him out of it, and they were just turning around to get our singles, and he stayed out there the entire night and gave 110% full performance yeah. just for us. Yeah. And I think that's incredibly rare, and to find somebody just of his status to still 
will do things like that and is totally present there and totally kind. And, I, and I, you know, that's just a testament to him as a person. That's so cool because typically uh, once they establish, once they do all his shots and he's oh, yeah. done, he, he could walk he could off have, and they nobody would have, you guys. Nobody would have even second guessed it. That's yeah. the thing. But yeah. he's just so there. And I think it also speaks to how passionate everybody was about this project and how, you know, I think everybody from the entire crew to the cast to the director, everybody was just giving all they had to it because we were all just so deeply in love with this project. You know, working with, uh, and it sounds like that's the lesson right there. I was going to ask, what do you sort of gleam? What do you absorb? What do you learn from when you get to work with people uh, like Kurt? Uh, on any of the projects you've worked on, with the amazing people you've worked on, like, do you do you actively seek to kind of learn and absorb from their experience and, and from what they do? Do you ask them questions? Or are you looking for time with them aside to be like, how have you done it? You know, wh wh how do you take advantage of having these, these icons with you in scenes and next to you? I think a, a lot about it is just um, observing, you know, and it's about, you know, you know, Kurt is such an incredible role model and just the way he, you know, conducts himself. And I think it's like a lead by example <laughs> sort of thing. And so just observing that and, you know, observing his process. Um, and also, I mean, to be honest, 90% of the stuff I talked to Kurt with about had nothing to do with the film. We were like, I was, I was getting my first car and we spent hours talking about different cars and him telling me, you know, different stuff he had driven and what he was thinking and like, oh, well that one's safe and this one's this and, you know, and, and stuff like that and talking, you know, I'm a huge baseball player and Kurt actually played professionally. Um, and so talking to him about that and just like, you know, the amount of hard work that that takes and playing and, and just like random stuff that he's able to just, you know, give wisdom on and just, and, you know, be a cool person, which yeah. is, you know. And, <laughs> you know? Um, when we, we were filming at a restaurant and, um, like, when they were, like, moving the camera, we had a break, we would, like, sit down in the restaurant, the TV was on and the Olympics were on, and I was just surprised on how much he knew about the Olympics. Yeah. Like, we uh, didn't know much about the game um, curling, oh, yeah. but he knew a bunch about it, so, like, he would explain it to us, and, uh, like, it's just super cool. We were in Canada, so. Yeah, and we were in Canada, so. It's it all curling. Had, yeah. he ever, had he ever curled, or did he just know about it? Did he ever tell you oh, I played um, that once? I think he just knowed about knew about it. I'll yeah. Have to ask him. Yeah. That. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. yeah I'll well, come back to you on that. One. Kurt yeah. Russell's a curler. <laughs> I gotta find out. There's Kurt Russell curler headline. Yeah. There's that could be the exclusive. There's so many reasons yeah. for us to know that. Um, you know, as you pointed out earlier, uh, Darby, you're 11, right? Yes. And, and you're 17. 17. 17 now. Yeah. All right. And you guys, you're still growing up in this business, but you've been doing this for a minute. Uh, I was reading somewhere. Uh, I want to say, Judah, the thing I saw was you were on stage at four, and Darby, your first gig was when you were six. Is that my in the yeah, ballpark? Yeah, I was around that age. You were around that age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had a face when I said you were four. Wait, wait what did I trigger there? Were you not four in your first thing? No, 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 I was just no. agreeing with you. Sorry. Okay. Fair <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I'm trying to. I was, you know, it was I'm funny though. Somewhere. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> well, no, I just want to know uh, what is your earliest memory? Those are such, that's such an early time to start. What do you remember from, from those beginning stages, those early days, especially four? Do you remember? Anything? I hated it. No. I hated acting when I was. That's that's what's funny about this. That's honestly what's funny about this is because um, my parents have a theater company, yeah. so that's why I was doing it so early. Because I was really like they were like, well, we can't have a babysitter, so we're dragging you to the theater. Um, and I I I hated it. I I I really didn't enjoy it. And it wasn't till much. I think when I was around ten was really when I started getting into film itself. And I know you know I watched um uh, that. It's called Hugo. It's an Asa Butterfield yeah. movie. And I remember watching it and watching his performance in that and just feeling how powerful it was and thinking, like, I want to do that. And that's really around the time where I actually developed a passion for it, which I have an unbelievable passion for it now. But that was definitely came later. <laughs> That's so funny. How relieved were your parents when you turned the corner and they were like, finally, he's into it. Thank well, God. Well, that's, like, I mean, honestly, they don't love this industry <laughs> just as far as staying grounded and yeah, staying yeah, like a yeah. kind person, you know? So I don't know if they were super thrilled about it. They were more like, well, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, because it's, you know, it's definitely an industry that promotes narcissism and it's definitely an industry where it's hard to stay you know, a, a genuine person. Right. Um, but I think it is, I think this man is a perfect example of, you know, of maintaining that and maintaining kindness. So. That's awesome. Yeah. What, what do you remember from, from the very beginning? Um, 
So I remember my sister did acting just for a little bit, but she's like, I only want to do if I get paid a lot and I get to work with a famous athlete, so I'm just going to play basketball. <laughs> so Those she... Yeah, so she famous athlete. Yeah, she plays um, basketball, and so I was like, I like doing it. Can I do it? So I started auditioning. I didn't um, really. I started about four, but I didn't really get a bunch of stuff. Maybe like a teeny bit, like a yeah. tiny commercial. Um, but like my first real thing was um, Drop Dead Diva on Lifetime. I just remember like I was so thrilled to get away from home and be <laughs> and find you know, like, be somewhere. Wait, how old were you when you were on this? What can you? Were I was. Here? I was six. You were six. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I wanted to get away too when I was six. I didn't have the meetings. You made it happen. You found a way. Crushing but it. All right, so you're thrilled. You're yeah. out of home. You're out. I was so happy. Here you are. And I, there were, um, there was another girl who was, there was like three other kids who were older than me, but we were playing siblings, and I was just so happy to finally do something that was not a commercial. Um, it was like yeah. an actual TV show. I was just so happy, and um, I just remember really enjoying it and wanting to meet all the actors and, like, wanting to, like, um, like being like, um, introducing myself. Hi, I'm Darby. What's your job on this set? Yeah. Um, but Amazing. yeah, so I I just really enjoy everything about it. Not just the acting, but like all the jobs are so important in their own way. That's so cool. That's amazing. Uh, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. And I can tell you guys love what you do. I, like I said back there, I'll say it again. I can tell you had a blast making this movie. Uh, it's obviously it just exudes fun. I wanna. We're gonna go to the audience in a little bit, but it's a Christmas movie. And you said you love Christmas, but big Christmas people. Let's talk Christmas. What uh, favorite traditions? Big around the house. What's something you look forward to every year? Um, so my grandmother, I call her Momo, she, um, she dresses up as Mrs. Claus and she goes to this, like, um, this place where, like, she reads stories and sometimes me and my friend will, like, be her elves and we'll, like, be, her, like, her little assistants and we'll tell the kids, yeah, we're elves and it's really fun. I really love doing that. Um, and we'll open presents early and have, sit around the fire and eat steak. <laughs> uh, eat steak. Steak? That's eat the Christmas? Steak. Yeah. What, what, are you, what are you doing around Christmas? Um, you know, for me, I think, f you know, for my whole community, it's just about that Christmas spirit and coming together. And uh, I think my favorite thing is my entire neighborhood actually has, uh, like, a touch football game that we play every year. Um, and it gets into, like, it's heated. Like, it's legit. Like, people are training for months before Christmas to be ready for this football game. Um, and it's super fun. And that, and, you know, the other thing uh, is, uh, you know, curling up and watching a Christmas film. Yeah. You know, I think that's such a staple. And so I think for me with this especially, it's like to, part of it. to be a part yeah. of that tradition for somebody, even if it's one person who, you know, on Christmas watches this film, to be a part of that and to spread that, that joy really is um, is just incredible. So it is pretty amazing. You guys, are, you do get to be a part of that tradition. What uh, what's your? I remember me growing up. I was I was writing letters every year to Santa. Uh, what's your relationship like with the big man? Are are you still writing letters? Are you, have you transitioned to just lists? Uh, you know, what was your relationship? I, what is your? I relationship? write my letters um, directly to Kurt Russell. You go to Kurt Russell now. Um, That's yep. an upgrade. Oh yeah, that right now. Oh yeah, that he is. is he's the A plus Saint Nick. Yeah. Um. Usually on Christmas Eve, like right before I go to bed, I just write a note and leave it beside the cookies and the milk. So, and then sometimes he'll like get a pen and write on it too, so I get to, so he'll write me back. <laughs> you you strike me as an 11 year old that has personalized stationery that says from the desk of Darby, and then you write your little note and you leave it for him, and he writes back. Well, I, watching this movie, something I really connected to as a kid, hand to God, I was convinced I could make a little trap to catch him in the act. I think a lot of kids go I through this. I think we're gonna start yeah. something. Yeah. I want to try this year. I think I'm gonna try. I never, to? I never achieved it. I will I try to try. Let's get him. <laughs> we're gonna do this yes. in real life. We're gonna do a yes. documentary, and yeah. it's gonna be we're the sequel. Gonna, yes. And it's just gonna be the Christmas Chronicles sequel, but it's gonna be all just found footage. My yeah. dream was to live the Eminem commercial, where you walk in, yes. he does exist, and then we all pass out and have presents. Like, but I tried every year, so I, re I really much connected to this story, and I really enjoyed it. There's one last thing that I did want to bring up, talking about being a part of tradition. Uh, Darby, I saw you retweeted this. I don't know if you guys noticed, in our studio, we don't usually have these wonderful little characters here, but Macy 
Macy's, our friends at Macy's, uh, hooked us up. They decorated our space oh, to celebrate cool. the parade next week. Uh, so we've got these amazing models. These are actual models from Macy's to, that they make before the balloons. I and then I saw that you guys, your elves from your movie, are, they're going to be in the parade this year. Mm -hmm. yes. That's huge. I'm so excited. I love how they're holding stuff. I actually haven't seen them those yet. Yeah, you, you haven't seen them in person yet. This was no. perhaps the most exciting thing to me because every year, every year I, my entire family gets up and we make pancakes and sit in front of the TV and watch the Macy's Day Parade. And when I heard that that was happening, I was like, I, I honestly freaked out a little bit because now I get to be a part of that. Yeah. And so. you guys I love the elves so much, and they're oh, all sorry. like, they're all funny. I love Bjorn. He's holding the ha candy cane. I love him because he, he eats, and he's not allowed to eat in the sleigh, but he does, and he gets it everywhere, which is Follow funny. <laughs> Follows his own rules. Uh, well, congratulations on this film, uh, on the on the parade, this whole thing, guys. Enjoy the ride. It's wonderful, uh, and I'm really excited for both of you and, and grateful for this movie. I can't wait to share it with everybody. Uh, it's going to be on Netflix. Uh, Thanksgiving Day, how perfect. November Yay. 22nd is on Netflix. It's next Thursday. It's on Netflix. I know you're going to watch it, but I'm going to remind you to watch it. Now, we got what is it, three. Tell me three. We got three questions in the room. We got microphones out there. Let's get the first one uh, right over here in the front. Hi. Thanks Hi. for coming. Um, so I have a question. Uh, being like young actors, I'm wondering if you've received or like what's the best advice you've received from maybe a more experienced or seasoned actor or producer or director or someone who maybe you look up to? From somebody specifically or in Vice and Joe? Yeah, anyone. Like maybe Kurt Russell you were talking about or I don't know, anyone, anyone you've worked with. Um, I think one of the things that's been most valuable to me um, it just because it came super early on in my career, I did a film called Demolition, um, which was Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, and I remember I had a few scenes in it which were just like pages of dialogue. Um, and uh, one of the super early on days we were um, chatting and he was like, okay, so here's what you're gonna do. He was like, memorize all of your lines as fast as possible. He was like, do them no matter what, do them speed round. And that's how you should memorize them, like from the beginning, the first time you read them, read them through as fast as you can, and then get faster and faster and faster. And he's like, do that right up until you film. And when the cameras roll, you slow it down, and you have zero chance of forgetting lines. And I think that has, just because it came so early on, that's something that I've definitely used in projects since then. Um, let me think. Uh, let's see. Probably from um, Miss Reese, uh, Big Little Lies, she would tell me, um, like, if you were in this situation, what would you do? Think about how um, the character would react. If you were that person and you were Chloe, how would you say this? How would you do that, you know? Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say. <laughs> Is it crazy when you're sitting there and, like, Ms. Reese or Mr. Russell is looking you dead in the eyes and saying something to you of great value or importance. Are you freaking out? Are you able to process the coolness of that moment? Are you trying to not forget what they're saying to you? A at a certain point, they're just somebody you work with. Or no, does that never go away? They're always these really cool, amazing people. I think there's pieces of both of it. Yeah. You know, I think I've had the privilege to work with people who are really cool and ge just genuinely nice people. And so I think it definitely becomes, you know, there's just a normal rapport. But yeah. to a certain extent, you know, I, I still think that there, you know, there's still a certain level of just like, wow, you're you're a really cool person and I've admired you for a really long time. And that, yeah. of course, exists. So. Yeah. yeah, but I totally agree with you. Sometimes, like, if someone really famous is, like, looking me in the eyes and telling me something, it's it can be hard to forget what they're saying because you're like, oh, my gosh, this is the Kurt Russell or this is the researcher or something, but um, usually, like, usually with people like that, I usually don't really know. I'm like, I, my parents are the ones who usually get starstruck because I <laughs> haven't really seen most of their stuff. <laughs> um, but like, some, like after like I meet them, I'll watch some stuff and I'll be like, okay, now I'm a little starstruck. <laughs> um, you ever but, see him yeah. do something really normal and it just makes it easier? Oh, he's buttering his own bagel. All right, that's fine. That's <laughs> just, it's just like me. Look Very at that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he's got a. He walks too. <laughs> oh my oh, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not just in the films, like in real life. Footsteps. What? Yeah. What do I got left? Two. I got two more. Next one's gonna be right over here. Come on down. Hi. Um, so I was wondering, um, can you share any fun stories on set? It sounds. It seems like you guys had a great time. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. So we had the idea to go to Toys R Us before it closed, sadly, um, and get Nerf guns. And we no, had a Nerf war. And, like, every day, like, on, at base camp, like, when we would come out of the trailers, like, one of us would just be like, so <laughs> you have to understand, guys. Yeah. Very serious. This was about this was about a month of being hit by Nerf bullet. Like she looks all nice and sweet, but you guys don't know. No, it was a full out war. It was a it was a Nerf gun war. Um, and it darts consumed, or discs? Was it darts? It was darts. It was so, darts. Oh, darts. oh yeah. Darts. Oh yeah. Those darts. sting. Um, no, and we we really we really committed to the Nerf war. Um, it was yeah. a full thing. We'd like I'd like camp out outside of her trailer, and I'd wait for like you know. 15 minutes, and she'd finally come out and get dive-bombed. Did do that. Um, and, you know, the opposite was true, too. So, and, <laughs> yeah. Um, we would set up, like, um, we would get, like, a chair and be behind the chair, and then we would set up, like, water bottles and try to, like, aim and hit them down. Target practice. Yeah, target practice. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you for that question. I believe we have one more, and I'm looking for, here we are. Come on down. Hello. Um, congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. So good. I love the Christmas spirit. Um, I was wondering, since you guys are both young actors, like if you have a dream role um, or what you would like to do with your acting, you know, like if there's any like messages you want to send or parts you really want to play to like represent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, I'd really love to direct actually. Mm. That's, um, you know, in the long run, that's really what I see myself doing. Really, And it's funny, I've found myself working with a lot of really incredible directors and cinematographers, and I'm always just like, until they call action, I'm always just like, what are you, what are you doing over there? Uh, what's, uh, how, so how are you setting that up? What's the, what's the reason for that? Um, and so that, for me, um, you know, I just love the other side of the camera, and I think just as an art form, it's something incredibly beautiful and valuable, and that's something that I'd l just love to do in the future. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I would l I really want to be a director too when I'm older. Um, and like a lot of times when I'm on set, I will um, like like after I know them, I'll be like, "So what's your job? Is there any way I can help? Is there anything I can do? Can you tell me what you're doing?" Um, and I would one of my dream roles would also be a superhero. I would love to be on like a DC or like a Marvel movie and be like on I did do stunts for this wires it was super fun you we got to like to the camera like I want to be on a Marvel movie I want to be DC. on a Marvel movie please you hear that DC DC that's actually my initials too so just letting Perfect. you know it's meant to be it's, <laughs> it's meant to be it's meant to be yeah um but yeah hey, all right thank you so much for that and I do have to let you go but there's some things I have you just said you did your own you did a couple of stunts what'd you do yes. Um, so I can't spoil anything. Okay. So but then. I did do because um, if I say say why I was on wires, it might Fair enough. spoil something. I'm just gonna tell you that I was on wires and I was like off the ground and I was like floating and it did like some flips and um, it was really cool and like um, I was like upside down for a long time and it was it was. What about super the reindeer? Cool. Oh right, and the reindeer. Um, I got to ride the reindeer. It was super cool. It was fun too because um, it felt like I. I was actually writing like something and would like bounce, but we had a wire on so it wouldn't fall. Gotcha. Um, but then after a while, my legs would hurt from sitting on it too much. Um, but yeah, it was really, it was really fun. Yeah. You any crazy stunts? You know, let you do anything? You did. Um, you did run in on the reindeer. That won't well, spoil it. Well, obviously, you know the car jump that yeah. you saw. Um, that was me actually. Um, yeah, me and Kurt. We, me and Kurt, they let us do that. Uh, so. <laughs> I no, but um, but we did do you know we did uh, we had about a month of green screen stuff, um, which was which was a lot of jumping and flying and um, you know a lot of the sleigh stuff as well. The sleigh was on a gimbal, yeah. and so there was a lot of really cool Most stunt days with flying the, like, around in the sleigh and yeah. stuff like that. And you know that was the coolest thing for me to see this film, and have none of it be there while you're filming it, right. and just sort of hope that it's gonna be there when you see it. Um, and then and when you finally do see it, and it's unbelievable and magical and the special effects team on this just did it's gorgeous yes. unbelievable they really job. I wrote it's, down, it's really I beautiful talk about special effects they're amazing in this yeah. yeah and so seeing that as a complete product um and just from start to finish is is definitely surreal yeah awesome all right well, let's wrap up. let's do let's close it out with an easy one favorite christmas song go mm. okay my favorite Christmas song is Santa's Got a Brand New Bag, and it's Elvis Presley, yeah. and I only like the Kurt Russell rendition of it that you might get to hear in this. So. Um, Harvey, you got to pick one. Oh, this is so hard. Um, 
Is it I easier like to give me your least favorite one? Because I can tell you the one I, I could do without ever hearing again. No. There's one um, that drives me nuts. I'm just going to say give me a favorite um, one. I like the Pentatonix Christmas albums. Oh, Ooh. Nice. Michael Bublé. Safe bet. Michael Bublé. Yeah. Michael Bublé is always good. You got Josh Groban always pops up once yeah. a year. Brings What's it. your least favorite one, though? We gotta, uh, this is going to be blasphemous. It's going to be blasphemous, around. but I'm going to tell yeah. you right now, I, I cannot stand simply having a wonderful Christmas time by <gasps> Paul McCartney. I know. Blasphemous. How dare you, I sir? How dare you? I'm sorry, sir, Paul. He watches, too, by the way. The way, uh, okay. I'm sorry. I love I'm it. sorry. I love everything else. I, love I, I cannot hear that song one more time in my life, and I know that I will hear it a billion times. <laughs> I don't know yeah, get I ready say. for Christmas. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. That said, I love Christmas. I love this movie, and I love you guys. I think you're great, and this is great, and, and you should be really excited and proud. You, you did a heck of a job. This is a, a fantastic so film. Everybody, do me a favor. Don't forget, uh, next Thursday, I know you're going to be eating a lot of food. You're going to be really tired. You're going to want to watch something in the season, in the spirit. Boom, right here. It's on Netflix. Uh, the Christmas Chronicles are, are coming. you got to check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Darby Camp, Judah Lewis, Thank right here. Guys. Thank you it. so much. Let's do it up.